talk about content presets. I think we first need to understand the limitations of light presets. So here's some light presets. If I want to add one, that entire light is added to the project. And we need more flexibility because uh, every light, so let's say this light here, it has an appearance and that appearance is coming from the content type. So in this case, it's set to image and it's got a loaded HDRI map. But the content on any light in HDR Light Studio comes from here. So it can be a bulb, uh, an image, gradient, flat color, a sky, and box gradient. Composite doesn't really count because that's a container for another lighting design really. Uh, and then box gradient. So these are the visual appearances of lights. And why we have content presets is because you want to be able to store these settings that you like in terms of what a light looks like and be able to apply those on another light and reuse those in the future. So that's what content presets are about. It's about controlling the appearance of lights. Right, let's also clear up something else which can be quite confusing about the presets panel. So at the moment we're looking at uh, lights and they're filtered by the HDRI Haven interiors. If I change this to look at content images, this panel isn't changing at all, but actually it is a different set of presets. So the first set, which were lights, was storing a HDRI map and all of these settings, not just the appearance down here, but how it was being mapped onto the canvas, the blend mode, how bright it was, everything you need to make a light was being stored. Now we've changed this to content images, all that's being stored here is this appearance section, is the content section. To add to the confusion, if we go to element images, again, we're looking at a different set of presets and they look the same. But in the case of element images, all we're storing actually is a path to an image. It's just storing an image and you can drag and drop that image onto that section there, but that's the only settings uh, being stored on an element image. So if I change the color here to flat and I colorize this HDRI map to be red, with an element image, if I drag and I drop that on here, I'm changing the HDRI map, but I am not changing any other settings on here whatsoever. If I was to change this to content images, and if I drag and drop onto this section here, I actually replace all the settings in this section. So basically there's a different hierarchy of presets going from lights storing everything to content which stores this whole set of settings to uh, element images which is only actually storing uh, an image in that case, one specific setting. So um, these different types of presets, these different levels in the hierarchy, they all have their uses, uh, but it can be quite uh, confusing as to why they all exist. And when we made these presets, we made sure that the content was available um, in the different types. So the lights and the content images and the element images will appear the same in the thumbnails, but what's behind them is very different and how you can use them and the benefits of using those is different also. So I hope that clears up some confusion about why so many of the presets may appear to be the same. There are three ways to apply content presets to existing lights. With the light selected, drag and drop the preset onto the light properties where the text is turning to green. The second way is to drag and drop the light preset onto the light in the light list. 
let's change and look at the studio lights. Now the light doesn't need to be selected, so we can swap the appearance of this light, select apply to master, and we've just changed the appearance. Let's drag and drop onto this light, apply to master, and let's drag and drop again on this light, apply to master. Okay, with the light selected, the third way is to right click on the content preset and select apply to current light. Right click, apply to current light. Right click, apply to current light. That's the three ways to apply content presets to existing lights. Tungsten Drop 4 adds new ways you can use content presets. So we've got all the different type of content presets here and we can now create new lights directly from these content. So if I drag and drop onto the canvas and select Creator's Background Light, we will have a light that fills the canvas and is suitable as for a HDRI map. And if I do the same onto the render view, Creator's Background Light, it will not use the light paint position, it will always create it centrally. And if I drag and drop into a space on the light list, create as background light, it will create it again. And then if I double click on a content preset now, and then it will ask me and I'll say create as background light, and it will add it there. So that's creating a background light. So let's change the um, filter here to some studio lights. So if we drag and drop onto the canvas and select create as 3D light, it will take into account the position of where it was dropped, which makes sense. If we drag and drop onto the render view, create as 3D light, it takes into account where we dropped it onto the model using the light paint mode. If we drag and drop onto a space in the light list and pick create as 3D light, the light will be positioned centrally and if we double click and create as 3D light again the light will be placed centrally on the canvas. So basically there are four new ways to create lights directly from any of the content in HDR Light Studio dropping onto the canvas, render view, a space in the light list or double clicking on the preset. Let's save our own content preset. So we have a light set up here and this appearance is a bit unique. It's, uh, it's based on an image so the content type is image and we've got this color ramp and let's say this is a light I know I want to use again in the future, or this appearance is something I want to use in the future. So it's really easy to save this as a content preset. There's a little button to the left of the content type label, and if we press that, we now have got the Create uh, Content Images Preset dialog, and I'm going to give it a tag, Studio Lights, pick that, Press that to move that across and then create a new tag called mark underscore lights and we'll name this uh, red green tubes. So I press OK. So that's now been saved. So let's find it. So under content images it will be stored because the type uh, of content here is an image so that's where we'll find it and studio lights so if we actually have a little look we can see it's already been added and it's here so if I now uh, want to drag and drop this and then create as 3D light we now have got this that we can use um, in the future so it was as easy as that so let's just delete that pick our original light and let's say change that to a bulb and edit this ramp to create quite an unusual looking light but that was quite fiddly to set up 
So let's say the light looks like this. And we want to save this appearance for a light. So just to the left of the content type, I use this button, press that. And again, let's use studio lights as a tag. And then look for mark, mark lights and add that. And we'll create a name uh, called concentric circles. Press OK. This has now been added, but it's not a content image. We need to choose content bulbs. And now we can see it listed there. Let's take a look at the presets for content we provide with HDR Light Studio. And we'll start with box grads. So I've got this light selected. So I can just right click, apply to current light. And we've got these various softnesses here of different uh, edges here that you can use on your light. Uh, these work well also as an alpha multiply to kind of soften the edges of your light. Then we've got some here where we've kind of got some settings that kind of almost create this corner lighting. Uh, we go around those different corners. Again, you can use that on the alpha as well. And then we've got these kind of grids, soft grids of lights here. Um, and you can imagine how tedious it would be to set that up manually every time you wanted an effect like this. So storing your own as well in the box grads is, uh, is a really useful thing to do. So that's box grads. We've then got bulbs. So we've got some basic kind of round bulbs with different ramp shapes going on there. We've got a ring. We've got these kind of linear lights, uh, which are set by changing the width of the bulb. So we've got three of those linear ones. We've got the ring light, and then we've got these, which are kind of fake spotlights, procedural spotlights. Um, so if we look at, say, the ramp for this one, it's all controlled through this, this ramp shape, and we can adjust this and play with this. Um, so that's your uh, bulb content presets. If we go to flats, these are simply flat colors. So it will change the content type to flat, and it will apply a color over the whole light. Content gradients, we have two categories. We have one, if I apply one, where you'll see that the ramp is applied to the value. And then we have some where it's applied, apply that to the alpha. So if you are going to use a gradient on value blend, use the value one. And if you want to use a gradient on the alpha multiply, use these alpha ones. And then we have a range of these uh, linear radial where it starts in different corners, starts in the middle. So there's a whole nice range of ready to go uh, gradients there for you to use. I'll skip images and I'll just go to sky. So for this one, I'll pick the background and I'll pick skies. And this is basically just our procedural sky uh, with different elevations of the sun. Um, some of these are for a clear day. So it says clear and then some have got more atmosphere going on. So you just right click and you can apply those to the current light uh, and go straight to different settings for the sky. Now, if we go back to content images, there's a huge range here. And basically, if you look at the video for light presets, all of the light presets that you see uh, as images will be in here as well to apply as content. Now, the ones that are not available anywhere else but in here are the mask so these are used on your alpha multiply so if i was to drag and drop this onto this light at the top here apply to alpha multiply then that basically controls the shape of this light so to see it better i'll change the master uh, to flat and then you can see how if i drag and drop that on here, apply to alpha multiply. So these shapes are great for controlling the shape of the light. And if you're doing a product shot, 
you might find, say, on a phone screen, something like that, you want to kind of cut the light uh, from corner to corner. You can just drag and drop that, apply to alpha multiply, and you can use this as a mask. So masks are unique to content images because they're the only ones that make sense uh, in terms of applying it to the alpha. So that's the content presets that come with HDR Light Studio.